What's going on guys, it is Caleb, and today we're going to finish off the getting started with programming lessons with some variables. So let's go ahead and dive right on into this, and uh, let's click on some variables. Let's learn JavaScript. Alright, Java, Java, Java. Reset. Alright, so we have learned how to do a few things now. Make strings, find the length of strings, find what characters it is to the nth position, do basic math, not bad for a day's work. To do more complex coding, we need a way to save the values from our coding. We do this by defining a variable with a specific case-sensitive name. Once you create or declare a variable as having a particular name, you can then call up that value by typing the variable's name. For example, we'll use var right here, as you can see, to declare that it's a variable and then we say the variable's name or var name we assign it a value type by using the equal sign and then whatever kind of data we want whether it's an integer a decimal or known as a double uh, booleans which are true or false or we can just assign multiple things we, you know it can be anything we want and some examples of it would be a string variable ling an age variable of 30 and a boolean variable of true and what it wants us to do is go ahead and create a variable called my age and type it in your age so to do this var my age and make sure that a and age is capitalized and it's not a function so go ahead and put equal and then type in your age and what this will do this will console.log our age and my age is the variable that we're passing through which is coming back up to here to our variable and is pointing to 15 so pretty much you can think of a variable as a reference or a pointer finger that just sits there and points where the data is located so if we go ahead and run this we got it correct so let's move on to the next exercise and once again let's reset this console more variable practice. We have seen how to create a variable, but how do we use it? It is useful to think that any time you type the variable's name, you are asking the computer to swap the variable name and swap in the value for the variable. For example, var my name equals Steve Jobs. My name dot substring zero five. Look at the second line above. You have asked the computer to swap out my name and swap in Steve Jobs. So, my name dot substring 05 becomes Steve Jobs dot substring 05, which evaluates the Steve. Now, some of you may be lost with this dot, substr dot substring method right here that's being called. Um, pretty much what it is is just a simple method, and it takes in two option parameters. Uh, as, you, as you can see, it takes in integers, and the first one is where you want it to start counting from and the second one is where you want it to stop counting from and what this will do this will count from the very first integer that's passed so in this case it's zero and it will go to the string and the way the strings are aligned is that the s and steve is a zero the t is a one the e is a two the v is a three the e is a four and the five is a space but wherever it ends that doesn't get con included on to the actual uh, output as you can see we don't have Steve space we have Steve so really it's 0 to 4 and just remember that it starts at zeros and doesn't start with one like most people would think you know so that's how we get Steve another example of a variable is my age equals 120 what is my age modulo 12? See the hint to check your answer. Uh, we're not going to do that. But what it wants us to do is declare a variable on line 2 called my country and give it a string value. Let's go ahead and do that by typing var. var, var <laughs> typing var my country. And then putting an equal sign and since it's a string value there will be parentheses around the, or not parentheses but quotation marks around these and we're going to type in our country name and put a semicolon 
use the console.log to print out the length of the variable my country. So we just type pass in my country and then we're going to use the method dot length and what this will do this will print out three because our country is three characters long now it wants us to use console.log to print out the first three letters of my country so to do this we just say my country and make sure to have that C capitalized dot length or actually it would not be dot length it'd be substring and we're gonna go 0 to 4 let's go ahead and run this as you can see we got 3 in USA so that's good that's exactly what we wanted it to do and as you can see I told it to stop at four, and that, and you may be wondering, well, your country's only three characters long, and I know that, but if I were to say zero to three, it would stop at the A, and the A would get chopped off, and there would only be an output of U.S. Unfortunately, you have to add one more to get the U.S. A. So we got the green light. Let's move on, and just reset once again. So far we've seen a how to create a variable, how to use a variable. Now let's see how to change a variable's value. A variable's value is easily changed. Just pretend you're creating a new variable while using the same name of the existing variable. Var my age equals 30. Say I had a birthday and I want to change my age to 31. You just say my age equals 31. Now that the value of my age is 31, Follow the instructions on line 1, 3, 5, and 8. We're using the method to show you the, you the order in which to tell the computer what to do is very important. So let's just go over to line 1. It's a comment. On line 2, declare a variable my name and give it your name. So var my name equals string Caleb. On line 4, use console.log to print out my name variable. So we're going to do console.log and then we're going to type in my name variable. On line 7, change the value of my name and just be the first two letters. So to do this, we're going to do my name dot substring, or actually my name equals my name dot substring and 0 to 3 or I guess you can go 0 to 2 because that one's the first two letters on line 9 use console.log to print out the my name variable so once again just console.log and then pass in my name and let's try to run it oh we did not get the first two that should be a 3 run it again and you did not log the first two letters of your name to the console. So, my name equals my name dot sub. Oh, here we go. We did not spell substring right. So, we changed that back to two. And we mistyped substring. There we go. Now, if we were to run it, simple typo. My bad. So, my name dot substring zero two. Okay, so. Here we go, just moving on. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. And let's go ahead and just reset this. Let's do a quick review. Data types. A, numbers. Just use them like regular numbers. B, strings. Anything between a quotation mark is a string. Words have to be strings. C, booleans. Can only be true or false. Variables. We store data in variables we can bring back the values of these variables by typing the variable name manipulating numbers and strings numbers comparison operators modulos which you know the other ones greater than less than plus equal uh, and so forth not or or and then we have strings length substring and there's a lot more methods that aren't mentioned on the code academy but if we do a simple google search 
you could find a, a decent amount. I think there's like 63 of them. They're all pretty cool and handy, especially when you're um, trying to manipulate things with JavaScript. Console.log prints into the console whatever we put into the parentheses, which down here is our console. So whatever is within the method gets passed down into the console. Read the comment on line 1. On line 3, create a variable, my job, and give it a string value. On line 4, log the value of my job to the console. On line 2, write your first comment. It can be anything. To write a comment, we do two backslashes, and we just say this is a comment. And it will be ignored by the compiler. Now on line 3, it wants us to create a variable of my job. And we can assign it anything we want. And we can just say making videos. Because it's a pretty awesome job. And it's not even a real job. And on line 4, log the length of my job to the console. So console.log my job dot length. And if we go ahead and run this, we get 14 and we get a green light moving on to the next exercise and let's go ahead and reset this now we are congratulations on making it this far you have learned a lot just one more exercise before a big pat on the back the last tricky thing we learned was about if out statements if else statements are conditional statements under different conditions the computer will output different things. Write your own if else statement. The only instruction is that the result of evaluating the statement is a log to the console of I finished my course. Not sure where they begin? Click the hint. So what it wants us to do is create an if else statement. But I'm feeling a little bit technical right now. Let's go a little bit advanced and let's go ahead and get user input and create a prompt. Now this is very easy. Let's just go ahead and say var and we're going to declare a variable and we just call it input. And we can equal it to a prompt and then open parenthesis and then we put quotation marks and then we want to whatever we want the prompt to ask. So pretty much what we can do is we can say are you cool? Question mark. Now, if we were to go ahead and run this, it would just give us a prompt asking us, are we cool? Now, what we can say, we can make our conditional. If, uh, let's see, if input equals, and we could say yes. Now, we can say console.log. And it wants us to log out. I finished my for first course. So let's just go ahead and copy this down here. Feeling a little bit lazy now. Paste it up into here. Else, we can do a console.log and just say, sorry, <laughs> you're not cool. Now, I'm pretty sure the prompts you will be introduced further along in the Code Academy series, but if we were to go ahead and run this, we're getting this prompt that says, the page at www.codeacademy.com says, are you cool? And we just gotta say yes, and we get the output of, well, you can't see it because we completed our course, getting a great job. Go ahead and rate that five stars and start our next course, or we can just close out of this box. Our console says, I finished the course, nice, you've completed this course, continue on this track, browse other tracks, or experiment with Code Academy. So, if you don't want to wait till the next video is coming out, which it should be out pretty soon if it's not already out, uh, feel free to go ahead of the courses. Um, thank you guys for watching, spending a few moments out of your day. A um, couple more seconds, you know, go down to the below, click the like, subscribe for more content. Thank you guys again for watching, and until next time, guys, have a nice day. Happy coding. Bye.